What's up guys, it's Josh and we're back again with another video. Today's the next installment in the video series where I talk about all the AP classes that I've taken and give you guys my tips on doing the best in them. This video has been highly requested as I believe it is one of the most common AP classes that people take in high school. Welcome to AP Survival Guide, World History Edition. In this video, I will not only be discussing my own personal tips for doing your best in the class and on the exam, but I'll also be giving you guys a little inside look into my own personal experience taking AP World History. In most high schools, I believe that AP World History is the first AP class that is offered, and it is usually taken by sophomores. Personally, I believe that AP World History was one of the hardest AP classes that I took during high school. Not only does it require constant studying, reading, and note-taking to grasp all the major concepts, but it also has a major writing component as well. I'm still confused why they take one of the hardest AP classes and offer it to sophomores. That just doesn't make any sense. A lot of times it gives people a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to AP classes and they don't want to take any more for the rest of high school. But I'm here to make sure that that doesn't happen and help you guys be successful in all the AP classes for the rest of your high school career. All right, so here's my AP World History story. I took AP World History as a sophomore at my high school in Abilene, Texas. If you guys did not know, there's a huge difference between the school systems in Abilene, Texas and the school systems in Fairfax County, Virginia. Like, drastic. In Texas, we'd be lucky if we had five or six kids each year that passed the AP World History exam. While here in Virginia, it seems like everyone's trying to get a five because passing is almost normal. But I went into the class with an open mind and I was ready to work hard. Keep in mind that AP World History covers all of history. Like, everything. Everything from the Stone Age all the way to like nowadays, like globalization and that type of thing. I was issued my textbook at the beginning of the year and it did not leave my backpack at all. It stayed with me 24 seven throughout all of my classes because any free time I would have, I would whip it out and start taking notes or keep outlining the chapter that I was working on. I had to, because every single day we would have a quiz. And these reading quizzes were meant to make sure that you read the chapters that were assigned that night. And for me to get a good grade on those quizzes, I had to outline the whole chapter to make sure I got all the key terms and grasped all the major concepts. In addition to these daily quizzes, every couple of weeks would have a major test which consisted of normally a multiple choice section and sometimes essays or short answer questions. And due on these test days was vocabulary as well as any of the charts or graphs that were associated with that time period. So there was a lot of work to do for every single chapter. Like I said, at the beginning of the year, we moved at a pretty slow pace. So by the time we got to March, April, we were grinding through the material as fast as possible to get it all done. Luckily, we did finish everything and I thought the exam went really well. Overall, I thought the class was a great experience it was really kind of the first smack in my face of high school and showed me what like a hard class actually is. But it also taught me a lot of good study skills that I used for my junior and senior year. Okay, now here's my tips for succeeding in the class for yourself. First of all, like I did, I recommend keeping your textbook on you at all times and using any free moments to continue reading or taking notes. You're gonna have to read this thing every single day whether you like it or not, or you're gonna fall behind in the content. When it comes to learning from a textbook, people have different methods about how they should go about doing it. Some people can just read the textbook and comprehend all the main ideas. I would not recommend this method in AP World History because there is so much content. What I did and what I prefer is taking outlines and notes for each chapter in the book so you can go back to them later and kind of get the main gist of the chapter. A lot of times you might have homework in other classes and you won't be able to make it through the whole chapter in the textbook. So in this case, I would go online. Realize that your school isn't the only school that uses the textbook that you're using. So that means that other teachers have also outlined the textbook and put their outlines online. So instead of taking notes from a 30, 35 page chapter in the textbook, I would take notes from a four or five page outline that I found online. And that made my notes go a lot faster. Okay, now let's get into tips for the actual test. Keep in mind that all the questions, whether multiple choice, short answer, essay, all come from the same pool of information. So in the multiple choice section, you're gonna be presented a passage and you're going to have to kind of infer what historical time period they're talking about in that passage. So then you can apply the appropriate key terms to answer the questions that follow. Then for the essay section, you're going to have to write two essays, a DBQ, which is a document-based question, and a long essay question. The DBQ is going to be the majority of the points, but the long essay is also a pretty big chunk. The most important part to succeeding in these essays is taking a look at the rubrics for each individual essay. These rubrics outline how to actually score points on the essays. For example, in the DBQ, you'll get points for mentioning a certain number of the documents, and you'll also get points for explaining the point of view or context in each document. You need to make sure that you hit every single point on the rubric 
to make sure that you can maximize your score on these essays. Also, keep in mind that these are history essays, not English essays. You do not need appropriate grammar. You do not need good sentence structure or diction or word choice or any of that. As long as the reader can kind of understand what you're saying and you're applying the correct key terms to the prompt, you are absolutely fine. Just focus on hitting the points and trying to keep it in English. All right, the weeks leading up to the exam, I recommend reading through all your outlines, all your notes, reviewing those and making sure you're prepared. If you want some practice questions or maybe a little more review, I would recommend picking up the Barron's AP World History Prep Book. That's what I used and it worked really well for me. And make sure you study those essay rubrics because they don't give them to you on the test. You're going to have to memorize what exactly you're going to have to do for each essay to score all the points. All right, those are my tips for AP World History. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hey, maybe you even learned something. If you did, go down below, drop a like, and hit that big red subscribe button to support more content from me in the future. Comment down below any questions or concerns or what you thought of the video. I try to respond to everyone. As always, I'll be back again tomorrow at 3 p.m. with another video. See you soon.